bass-heavy music thumps through a West Hollywood cafe on a Thursday night, while smoke fills the air. Not from cigarettes, but from marijuana. This is the original Cannabis Cafe, the nation's first eatery where patrons can order marijuana products with their meals. Tonight, renowned independent marijuana journalist Ricardo Baca is a customer. And this is the first time that we've ever had flour and concentrates and edibles being served in this kind of a restaurant-like environment, uh, really, in the modern world, but this has happened legally. California legalized the retail sale of recreational marijuana two years ago. The original Cannabis Cafe opened in October this year. I think what this tells us about where we are is that culturally, cannabis has finally arrived in the mainstream. Humans have been using marijuana since ancient times to treat health problems like insomnia, anxiety, and pain. But while we know it can feel good to consume marijuana, there's still not enough scientific research to really know what it does to the human body and brain. And that's 50 years after THC was discovered. That's the molecule in marijuana that gets us high. That should have signaled a, a wave of international research. And yet, American drug policy is a powerful being, and it prevented research from happening in most parts of the world, including here, where so much of the world's uh, medical research is actually happening. In the 70s, the federal government classified marijuana as a Schedule I drug. Around the same time, President Richard Nixon declared a war on drugs. Remember some of those anti-marijuana government ads from the 70s? I'm talking about marijuana. Well, marijuana is still in that category, the same one heroin is in. The label says marijuana is dangerous and has no medical value. And that's limited the amount of research scientists have been able to do. What does the science tell us about weed? Not nearly enough. Igor Grant is the director of UC San Diego Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research. There's a lot of research the federal government actually has supported on basic science, how does it work, uh, what are the negative effects, but until recently there hasn't been much work on the medicinal properties. He says over the last two decades, states like California have stepped up to fill research gaps. And the legislators in California wanted to know is there a science basis for medicinal cannabis? The center began in 2000, a few years after California legalized medical marijuana. Some of its funding is from federal sources, but over half comes from the state and private donors. Additional funding from the state has been coming in since Californians legalized recreational marijuana in 2016. We did some of the early studies that showed actually that marijuana or constituents of marijuana were helpful in controlling certain kinds of pain chronic hypersensitivity pain that are not well controlled by things like aspirin or Advil. And it turns out that THC in low doses is actually um, quite good in controlling this kind of pain in some patients. Researchers have already completed seven cannabis clinical trials with humans and more are underway. Grant says new research is focused on endocannabinoids. These natural molecules in the human body send signals to different cells, regulating processes like pain and appetite. And it turns out certain compounds in marijuana work just like those molecules. Some of the other work that we're engaged in moving forward are could cannabidiol, which is a non-psychoactive ingredient in, um, in marijuana, uh, be useful in uh, conditions like autism, like managing very severe symptoms of autism? Could it be helpful in managing the early symptoms of psychosis that we see in schizophrenia? But he says that Schedule One federal classification on marijuana still limits research. That's an issue because science is necessary to find the benefits, but also the risks. People are often saying, well, California has legalized marijuana. You know, why can't uh, we, for example, just go to one of the dispensaries, buy a bunch of whatever it is, and do a clinical study? It's absolutely illegal at the federal level. I would lose my license if I did that. So we have this conflict between state and federal law that really inhibits the research. 
Grant says there are still a lot of questions. How does marijuana impair drivers? Could marijuana products damage the liver if they're mixed with other substances? And do their health benefits change if they're consumed by mouth, rubbed on the skin, or smoked? It's not just scientists that want to find out. There's a growing appetite among consumers to get some answers. I would probably suggest this one right here. This Chris is Simpson is a bud tender at Dispensary Urban Leaf in Mission okay. Valley. It's going to be a very nice indica for when you are trying to help with sleep. During my hour-long conversation with Simpson, about two dozen customers shuffled into the dispensary. Some customers ask how they can have fun or chill out. Others ask for help for their health problems. A lot of customers would call us and see, I have Parkinson's, uh, what can I take for Parkinson's? What can I take for Down syndrome? What can I take for um, restless leg syndrome? So a lot of it has to do with your own personal experience and with your own research. Simpson says he's done his research on marijuana okay, and it so makes him happy to help customers with their medical needs. But he doesn't like being seen as a doctor. But at the same time, it is a lot of pressure on a public standpoint that we as a whole are what is what's helping these customers on a daily basis. And we're not licensed like your medical doctors are. We're not going through four to five, maybe even 10 years worth of medical training. We're just going based off of our research, our trial and error, um, and our client's trial and error. Simpson says he hopes scientific research can accelerate because he sees the demand not only for recreational, but medical marijuana every day. And he doesn't want his customer's health depending on trial and error. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Okay.